Hello, welcome back to learning more about chemistry. This is the third video of the 12 video series and I'll be leaving the other two video links in the description below if you haven't already watched them. So basic introduction, what we're talking about today is electron shells, the Lewis dot structure and electronic configuration. Electron shells. So in the previous video we talked about the periodic table and how it's categorised. One of the ways it is categorised that I mentioned was by the number of electrons an element consists of. And as I explained before, these elements orbit around the nucleus in electron shells. So the electrons fill the shells around the nucleus from the inside out. And what I mean by that is if you look at a different atoms and different atoms have a different number of electrons, the electrons will fill around the nucleus from the inside out, just like water fills in a glass. When you fill a glass with water, the water fills from the bottom to the top, so imagine it filling from the inside to the out. Shell number one can hold two electrons, shell number two and three can hold eight electrons. You always need to remember that atoms are always happy when the outer shell or valent shell is full of electrons. Because it's so important, as I just said, it is called the valence shell. So imagine having a stadium with a stage inside and spectators going all the way around. We're going to act like the stage is a nucleus and the spectators going all the way around are the electrons. So the rule is we are only going to sell tickets closest to the stage and the goal is to make each shell full of spectators. So the first shell is only going to hold two seats, the second shell is only going to hold eight seats, and the third shell is also going to only hold eight seats. So here are the seats. So we're going to look at different scenarios. So here's our first scenario, we've sold one ticket, but the goal is not met. We've only got one electron, and so this is actually hydrogen. Another scenario is we have sold two tickets. So that's good, and we have met the goal. The shell is full. This is helium. So what if we have sold seven tickets? You notice that we have sold the tickets closest to the stage and the ones in the second shell. However, the valent shell is not full, which is not good. This is the element nitrogen, and this explains why nitrogen would want to form bonds and try to fill in the, those empty seats in that valent shell. What if we sell 10 tickets though? We would have a full valent shell and that would reach our goal. This is actually the noble gas neon. And for our last example, we have sold 18 seats. Notice we have all three shells full. This is very stable configuration and this is the noble gas argon. So you may be asking, if the valent shell is so important, why don't we just focus on that? And also, many other clever scientists thought the same, such as Dr. Lewis, who was a physical chemist. And this leads us to the Lewis dot structures. Lewis dot structure. Dr. Lewis said, we should draw elemental symbols and then we are going to draw the electron valent shell around it. So let's see how this works. We're going to look at carbon. The most important part in terms of carbon's reactivity is the valent shell. Let's just get rid of everything else. We're going to draw the electron in the valent shell around carbon. This is the most important part. Carbon has the atomic number of 6. And now that two of those electrons in the first shell are gone, leaving the other four in the valent shell. I just want to remind you, these dots represent the electrons in the valent shell. So this is the Lewis dot structure for carbon. Let's look at nitrogen. To draw Lewis dot structure for nitrogen, all you have to do is draw the symbol for nitrogen and draw the valent shell electrons from the top all the way around it. So this is what it looks like, nitrogen. So here are the first 20 elements with their Lewis dot structure. And you can notice that the columns or groups are the same. This explains why they have the same chemical reactivity and why they will form the same kind of bond. Electronic configuration. For the electronic configuration, the first thing we need to do is find the number of electrons in the element. So we use this number to find the electronic configuration. 
Here we have our periodic table, and we need to remember that every element in group 1 ends in S1, and every element in group 2 ends in S2. Now we're going to go to the P block, which is on the right side, and all elements in the P block end in P1 and then P2 all the way up to P6 from left to right. So boron would be P1, carbon, P2, nitrogen, P3, and so on. So if you look at the transition metals, we start with D1, and once again, we go from left to right, but all the way up to D10. So if we look at oxygen, first we're going to look at the second period. So we're going to write down 2, which is in the second row, or second energy level. As the first shell can only hold 2, we write down 2S2. We have to go to the P block, where oxygen is, on the right hand side. To finish it off, we have to look at how far across oxygen is, and it's fourth across, from left to right. So, the complete electronic configuration for oxygen is 2S2, 2P4. So, this is a simpler diagram to show the different blocks. We ha on the left, you have the um, S block, and then transition metal, you have the D block, and the right side, we have a P block. And you may see a lot of these diagrams, and these um, simplify and show you which order the electronic configuration is used. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.